Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for this candidate forum hosted by Aging Action Initiative and featuring candidates running for town council in Fairfax and San Anselmo. This forum is the second in a series of three that will focus on issues and concerns related to older adults in Marin County. This forum is being live streamed on YouTube for public viewing. I'm Jody Timms, the Town of Fairfax representative to the Marin County Commission on Aging, the chair of Age Friendly Fairfax, and a member of the Aging Action Initiatives Advocacy Alliance Committee. I would like to acknowledge our community outreach partners, the Marin County Commission on Aging and Age Friendly Marin. AAI is a collaborative network of over 280 community-based organizations, public agencies, and healthcare professionals working together for the well-being of older people in Marin. AAI offers educational programs for frontline professionals, an innovative detect and connect mental health and dementia training, and anti-ageist advocacy opportunities. This afternoon's forum is being moderated by the League of Women Voters of Marin County. This year, the League has been celebrating 100 years of following a mission to empower voters and defend democracy. Moderating candidate forums is an important part of their vision of a democracy where every citizen has the desire, the right, the knowledge, and the confidence to participate. The League is a strictly nonpartisan organization and never supports or opposes individual candidates or political parties. And now I hand you over to our moderator, League member, Linda Deer. Thanks, Jody. Good afternoon. My name is Linda Deer, a member of the League of Women Voters of Marin County and your moderator for this forum. Thank you for joining us for this special topic focused forum featuring candidates for two town council races, Fairfax and San Anselmo. Thank you to Aging Action Initiative for inviting the League to host this event. We are honored to be here. Slide one, please. And thank you to our community outreach partners, Marin County Commission on Aging and Age Friendly Marin. Slide two, please. With me is League member Elaine Biagini as timekeeper. Off screen, we have Ann Wakely and Nancy Bell providing Zoom support, along with the team at the Community, Community Media Center of Marin. Thank you. The League is a trusted membership organization that encourages informed and active participation in government. We do not endorse or oppose candidates or political parties. In addition to promoting voter education, the League advocates for issues and may take positions on issues that arise in ballot measures. I would like to remind everyone that the candidates have all agreed to participate under ground rules set for this forum. In order to ensure impartiality, it is the League's policy that candidate forum team members not live in the voting jurisdiction the candidates represent, nor be actively involved in a candidate's campaign. This afternoon's forum is being live streamed on the League's YouTube channel and facilitated through our partnership with the Community Media Center of Marin. This event is also being recorded and will be available on our website, www.marinlwv.org. For broader community access, a Gavel to Gavel production will be rebroadcast on CMCM TV's channel 30 days and times will be posted on our website. I would like to briefly explain the role of our timekeeper. To assure our candidates stay within the allotted time, 
they will see a box designated clock. At the appropriate time, the box will turn yellow, indicating the candidate has 30 seconds remaining for their response. The box will remain yellow for approximately 10 seconds and will then go black. When the box turns red, the candidate should complete the sentence they are on. This afternoon's questions will focus on issues and concerns related to older adults in Marin County and the Fairfax and San Anselmo communities. I will open by addressing the first question to the candidates for San Anselmo Town Council, followed by a different question to the candidates for Fairfax. Ultimately, the candidates for each town will be asked the same five questions, just in a different order. I will also rotate who starts each question for each town. Slide three, please. There are five candidates running for three seats on the Fairfax Town Council, all of whom are with us this afternoon. Barbara Kohler, John Reed, Bruce Ackerman, Chance Cutrano, Joe McGarry. In addition, there are five candidates running for three seats on the San Anselmo Town Council, all of whom are also with us today. Brian Colbert, John Wright, Ann Politzer, Eileen Burke, Alexis Feynman. Thank you. The candidates have been invited to make a one minute opening statement. After that, the candidates will each have 60 seconds to answer each question. To be fair, I will rotate the order in which they respond to the questions. For opening statements, we will begin with Barbara Kohler. Good afternoon. I'm honored to have served on the Fairfax Town Council for seven years and as mayor in 2015 and 2019. I'm a scientist with bachelor's and master's degrees in biological sciences with a long-term commitment to protection of public health and the environment. With more than 20 years at Cal EPA cleaning up hazardous waste sites and five years enforcing air quality regulations at the Bay Area Air District. I'm an environmental consultant for several years. I ran a significant climate change program for the 35 California air districts. I have many endorsements, Supervisor Katie Rice, Fairfax Mayor Goddard, Larry Bragman, the Sierra Club, California Democrats, Marin Democrats, Marin and Ross Valley Firefighters, North Bay Labor Council, Marin Women's PAC, and many others. I have an excellent track record of accomplishments on the council, including running three successful tax campaigns for Fairfax. I've been active in age-friendly activities for many years as a council member and also as the primary caregivers for my parents in the past. Thank you. John Reed. Hi, uh, I'm running for my fourth term on the Fairfax Council. And um, basically I am dedicated to the quality of life in Fair the town of Fairfax. Uh, and that's why I'm running. I've also been asked by many, many people in the com uh, community to continue to be on the council. And they were very supportive of my running again. Um, let me see, I, I listen very well to also impartially to all sides and try to be open to all people in the community um, and balance out decisions so that it works well for all people there. And of course we have many issues um, housing, big supporter of Victory Village, trying to work out ADUs so that it works for our community. Uh, climate change is, we need to really em embrace the need for that, uh, shown with our fires. Uh, you know, there's community policing. Um, COVID is hard on our society as well as our businesses. And so it's really important that we all support each other. And, and I'm dedicated to that as a community member. So thank you. Thank you. Bruce Ackerman. I'm Bruce Ackerman. I'm running for fair for re-election to the Fairfax Town Council. A lot of my focus is on being on having respectful and productive conversation on the many issues in Fairfax and beyond. And I believe that indeed our council discussions have been much improved during the three years that I've served. 
Prior to council, I chaired our general plan advisory committee for about 10 years and was a planning commissioner. And during that five of those years, I worked very hard to bring the opportunity to Fairfax to build Victory Village, 53 units of very affordable housing specifically for seniors. I'm immensely grateful that Victory Village is now opening and will improve countless lives. I bring a technical background to the council, which has proven a helpful piece as we face the effects of climate change, a pandemic, wildfires, and in another season, possible flooding. I work with the Climate Action Committee, which was created out of my general plan work, with Flood Zone 9 on the Mosquito District and design in a microgrid resiliency center will all continue if I'm reelected. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chance Kutrano. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chance Catrano and I'm excited to be here. I'm running for Fairfax Town Council uh, after having served on our Fairfax Open Space Committee and our volunteer board simultaneously, as well as our sort of ad hoc COVID task force uh, that came out of this pandemic. And I really got involved because I remember during the power shutoff last fall, wondering if there was a plan for folks, especially uh, at-risk folks, especially older adults in our community. And after a couple of days, there wasn't a plan. And I decided, you know, next time that comes around, I need to do something, I need to step up. And when the pandemic hit and the shelter in place hit, I established a volunteer program. And I've continued to snowball that into a number of other things, a rental, uh, residential rental assistance program. And just, I'm really focused on bringing people together and making sure everybody's folded into good governance, good decision-making, so we can fight climate change and be prepared in case of disasters. Uh, so really appreciate being here again. Thank you very much. Now we'll hear opening statements from the candidates for San Anselmo Town Council, beginning with Brian Colbert. You forgot Joe McGarry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're right. Uh, that's all right. All right, we'll hear from you. All right, all right. Uh, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Um, hello, I'm Joe McGarry, and I'm running for Fairfax Town Council. Um, I've served this town um, through my work at Good Earth for the last nine years and uh, have served the town uh, as an essential worker um, during the pandemic in that role as well. I'm a second generation Fairfaxian, and I've seen uh, and assisted the older adult experience in Fairfax firsthand through my mom and dad. I've seen all the areas where we as a town and individually as neighbors can support the growing number of older adults, adult people in Fairfax uh, to enjoy lives full of connection and comfort. There are a lot of steps that can be taken at the town and county levels, such as affordable housing and memory care facilities, addressing fraud targeted at older people and exploring town shuttles and older adult parking spots. But the transformational moment that is possible right now for all of us is to seek out the older adults in our neighborhoods and become friends and resources for them. What if we found our most vulnerable older people and became their adult children and checked in on them, brought them groceries and made them feel comfortable enough to call us, call us when they needed help? The time has come to close the gap that our busy lives and technology advancements have created and turn back the clock in Fairfax. Connect with one another and be of service to our older neighbors. I'm committed to creating the same level of care that I gave to my parents for all older people in Fairfax. Thank you. Um, now we'll move on to the candidates for San Anselmo. Sorry about that. Beginning with Brian Colbert. Yeah, my name is Brian Colbert. I'm currently the vice mayor of San Anselmo. I've been on council since 2017. I live in town with my wife and my 10 year old daughter. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I would just like to say at the outset that um, I voted and strongly supported San Anselmo's application to the World Health Organization as an age friendly city in November of 2018. I'm really proud of the fact that, you know, we did something substantive and then just sort of talk and think about it. Um, the other thing I'm uh, incredibly proud of and happy about is um, reimagining Creek Park. It's a, a brand new common space uh, in downtown San Anselmo. And I think one of the things that it does is it embodies and what we've done is we've taken two of the tenants from our very own San Anselmo uh, Commission on Aging in that um, we did take a consideration of incorporating a senior lens into the park planning. And secondly, it's a, it's a common space in the heart of our downtown that uh, will allow seniors and less abled people to meet and safely social distance in groups which uh, is important during COVID and into the future. 
Thank you. John Wright. Hi, I'm John Wright. Um, this is my seventh year on the town council. I served as mayor in 2015 and 2018. Um, as uh, stated on my uh, website, my principal goals for the town are a strong public safety, uh, keeping the town family and age friendly and vibrant, and also sustainable economic recovery. I think the most important issue for the approximately 25% of our community that's uh, over 62 is public safety. And specifically, I'm a, a member of our local Firewise Neighborhood Program. Um, I'm a strong supporter of uh, flood control. Uh, I've always supported our work on improving streets, pedestrian crossings, and uh, uh, bicycle safety, especially downtown. Uh, the Firewise Neighborhood Committee is particularly important. I think this should be expanded throughout the town. I'm working actively uh, with town staff to uh, take a look at evacuation routes and uh, parking issues that we have in our hills. Uh, so I think public safety for the elderly or for the age community, age, age, older community is, is probably the most important issue for them. Thank you. Next is Ann Pollitzer. Hi, my name is Ann Pollitzer and I'm running for San Anselmo Town Council because I love San Anselmo. I've lived here for 22 years. I'm a Cal graduate with a background in print and television, but while I was raising my kids here, I morphed into a serial volunteer. It's a repeat room parent, Drake volunteer, Saba and Girl Scout leader. I've de developed a yes backed multicultural mythology program at White Hill and I've phone banked for school bonds. I've got doors in local elections and I've walked swing districts to flip congressional seats. I did it all and I did it effectively. While I was walking precincts here, I asked people, what do you want from your town government? People were very clear, San Anselmans want their town government to listen to them. They don't want flashy projects that pass costs onto the taxpayer. They want sensible, responsible leadership that keeps our town safe and resilient. I'm involved with Age Friendly San Anselmo and I wanna grow the volunteer network back at the ground level in San Anselmo. I'm really excited to be here because Fairfax has been so forward in the area of aging that I wanna learn from all the people here present. I'm endorsed by our current mayor, six former mayors and numerous community friends and pillars. Thank you. Next is Eileen Burke. Hi, I'm Eileen Burke. I was born and raised in San Selmo, and I'm running because I want to give back to the town I've lived in for over 50 years. I know that you, you came here just for the same reason my parents did. It's safe. We've got great schools. It's not overcrowded. Our neighborhoods have character, and we have a nice downtown. I love this town, and I'll work to keep the town the same place that brought you here. Some of my priorities are fire and flood preparation, making downtown vibrant, and restoring Memorial Park. I'm married and I have 16 year old boy girl twins who are juniors at Drake High School 1327. I have volunteered in many ways, but most importantly, right now I was recruited by and I'm on the task force for age friendly San Selmo. I'm the captain of the pilot program on Tamalpais Avenue, where I'm leading community building and we've got disaster preparedness going on. Plus, we've been giving out free masks and hanging them in the downtown trees to fight COVID. I'm a lawyer, I'm good on my feet, I know how to advocate and I know how to reach consensus and I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Next, Alexis Feynman. Hi, I'm Alexis Feynman and I'm a current council member running to keep on going because I care deeply about the place I call home. I'm a lifelong Ross Valley resident, a teacher, a third generation Marinite and the youngest council member in Marin County. I represent our collective commitment to a safe and resilient future. Prior to joining the council, I participated in many council meetings on a variety of topics, and I strive now to be the council member I wanted then, thoughtful, thorough, community-minded, and strategic. I bring an open-minded perspective, a desire to collaborate, and an eye for nuance. As a teacher, I know how to do my homework. I am endorsed by the California Democratic Party, the Marin Democratic Party, the Marine Professional Firefighters, our local Ross Valley Firefighters, the North Bay Labor Council, um, and I'm the only candidate endorsed by the Sierra Club and the only candidate in my race endorsed by the Marine Women's PAC. I'm also proud to be endorsed by Supervisor Katie Rice, Mayor Ford Green, and my fellow council member Steve Berto. I believe our community is stronger and our town functions better when we bring everyone to the table. And that's what I'd like to do if I'm elected for the next four years. Thank you. Thank you. Now for the questions. We will begin directing questions to the candidates for the Fairfax Town Council, starting with John Reed. Question number one. 
In a recent survey of older adults in Marin, climate change and emergency preparedness were listed as primary concerns. What do you plan to do to help older residents in your town be ready? John? On a, here we go, unmuted. Um, what I plan to do is a lot of things I've already begun doing. I'm active with their local firewise and getting people organized so that in case of a fire, people have a go bag ready and they know what to do and it's not a last minute thing. I've also been involved with other emergencies in the past in 2005 when many people remember we had a big flood going on. Um, I headed up a volunteer task force then to help people dig out and assist people who had slides coming into their houses and digging things out, things like that. Um, I believe more needs to be done. I think uh, FireWise is a good uh, organization to have block where it enables us to organize block captains that identifies people and their needs and have that information not publicly available, but readily available to, to neighbors so people can help each other. And that really builds community and pulls people together. And, and that would be uh, essential really in a disaster. So thank you. You're muted, You're muted by the way. Next is Bruce Ackerman. There we go. Yes, I, uh, as I said, I've worked with the, the climate issue and which includes resiliency as well as mitigating our contribution to climate change for a lifetime. One of the things We seem to have lost Bruce. Can anybody help? Bruce tends to have a bad interconnect connection. If he turns off his video, sometimes it works, but he does freeze often. Okay, Bruce, your video has frozen. We understand maybe if you turn your video off, it might enable you to talk. He can. Why don't, Linda, why don't we move on and come back to Bruce? Um, so it gives him some time my, to correct his. Um, my internet shut down. Okay, should okay? I just continue? Are you back on, Bruce? So, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. One, yeah. So one thing I'm working on right now is a, a turning our pavilion into a community resilience center where the lights would stay on during a power outage and therefore people could come to the pavilion during a time of either a storm or a public safety power shutoff to recharge their phones and their equipment and recharge themselves. And that would also show an example to the community of how we can do the same for our own residences if we can. Um, I also work with the flood zone to, uh, to address flooding issues, which we're coming along well on, I believe. We're doing a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a basin, a flood detention basin above town that, will, that should help and should again show an example of what this, this could be to, to uh, prevent the Ross Valley from flooding as badly. And I work with the, uh, with my wife is actually in healthcare. And so working with her and, uh, and understanding the health situations in Fairfax in the county has been very informative. Thank you. Sorry for losing the internet. <laughs> Thank you, that happens. Uh, we're gonna move on to uh, Chance Catrano. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so this question is, is critical. Uh, I work as an environmental a nonprofit director. And so I, I'm thinking about climate change every day. And when I think about it here in Fairfax, I think about the interconnection of a number of different things. So one, as Bruce had mentioned, I think it's critical that we get this resiliency center, this microgrid up and running. So folks have a place to go to, to connect, to get food if their power is shut down, et cetera. But the other critical thing I think about is the inter interconnection with transit 
And I think about the lack of sidewalks in a lot of residential areas and the lack of uh, opportunities for active transportation as people are aging in place. Um, you know, that's critical that we, we get around that issue too, because people need to have mobility um, as they age in place. The other bit I'm thinking about is just getting people connected in their local networks. That's how we're gonna be most resilient. And people need to plug into these new neighborhood response groups that we're gonna be rolling out. And those are a couple of things I'm thinking about right now. Thank you. Joe McGarry. Yes, I think uh, uh, all public safety starts with us in our neighborhoods. And uh, I think that's the, the, the Firewise structure is a, is a perfect place uh, that the infrastructure is there to reach out within our neighborhoods and identify um, the older adults who are most vulnerable uh, during an emergency. And I think we also need to think outside the box a little bit. We've become very dependent on certain forms of technology for emergency alerts and need to maybe step back and, and get a little analog about the way that we're gonna reach some of our older adults and phone calls and phone lists. And it all starts with identifying where those folks are in our neighborhoods and that that we can be first responders and, and, and assist and make sure that they're prepared and ready to go uh, when the emergency embarks. So it's, it really, really starts in the neighborhoods and starts with individuals. Thank you. Barbara Kohler. Okay, so let me tell you what I've done. I've, as mayor in 2015 and 2019, I convened our Citizens Disaster Council and I've been the only mayor to do so since 2006. Along with updating our emergency operations plans, working with emergency responders and others, I called for something new, which was innovative community-friendly evacuation maps with tips so we can all get out on our own. And first they told me couldn't be done. Well, it got done and they're all online now and they will be mailed out to all residents. Also working with Jody Timms, I got our first neighborhood response group coordinator hired in Fairfax, who's starting to work with our Fairfax Firewise communities to get NRGs up and running. I also serve on the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority, which is gonna help us in pretty much all of the county. And I've also been a CERT. But the other thing we need to look at, particularly in this time of expanded fire seasons and mega fires is really looking at our staffing levels at Ross Valley Fire. We got to have the firefighters on board so we can fight these fires. And I've done a lot for climate change, but I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, the next question is directed to candidates for the San Anselmo Town Council. And we're going to begin with John Wright. The question is, if you are elected, how will you support the creation and implementation of San Anselmo's age-friendly plan? And again, beginning with John Wright. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I was proud to have been uh, involved at the uh, outset in getting that plan approved. As Brian mentioned, uh, late in 2018, I worked with Sue Ellen Lamort and others on a, and the, our recreation department to actually put the plan together and get it approved by the council. So I'm very supportive of what it does. Um, I'm uh, working with Park and Rec uh, frequently on ensuring that we have uh, the right connections to that program through our volunteer networks. Um, I think there's a, uh, we, we, have a, we have a lot of activities in, in, in our recreation department. We need to do more promotion of that to older people in the community. We, we also look to Fairfax on that front for inspiration. There's a great program in Fairfax and I think more coordination between the two towns would also be a great idea. Thank you. Same question to Ann Pollitzer. Um, I too am involved with uh, Age Friendly San Anselmo. It's a fantastic organization and it's beginning to really grow itself um, via Sue Ellen and Sarah Robinson. Um, I like what they're doing. I think if we hired, like we used to have in San Anselmo, a volunteer coordinator for the town, we could plug all of these organizations together through that and we could interface with Fire Safe Marin, Age Friendly San Anselmo, and really build a network where we were able to identify vulnerable seniors and families with kids, people with oxygen, and create a map you know, for each neighborhood of who was in what house and throw that mutual net of responsibility out to save people. Um, 
you know, I think that age friendly can also help, you know, uh, John mentioned the, the problem of analog communication with older people. Um, one of the problems that people have is they can't hear their phones. They don't know how to use technology. There could be training classes for elder people or, or, or an ability to find, uh, you know, low cost, simple phones for them, you know, that they could use a grant program where people could have an emergency uh, alert system in their homes that they could actually work with. Thank you. Now, Eileen Burke. So uh, I'm not just supportive of age-friendly San Selmo, I'm actually on the task force. Um, so I'm already leading the work we're doing and it's really starting at the neighborhood level. And like I said previously, the pilot program started in my neighborhood and by me and Sue Ellen Lamort who lives across the street from me. We've held several events and we've reached out to our neighbors and seniors, not just by email, but also by calling them and by putting something in their mailbox they could read because we wanted to make sure everyone was contacted. Um, We've had a great group. We've had that group, actually six of those people have signed up to take the CERT training, which is emer emergency preparedness training. But mostly what we've done is brought people together at the neighborhood level to look out for each other. We live in the flood zone and we know we need to be prepared. And what I'll do is make sure other neighborhoods implement the same kind of program we've done on my street. Thank you. Next, Alexis Feynman. Hi, thank you. Um, I'll kind of go back to the original question, which has to do with the, the creation and implementation. You know, my experience in my past year on, on council is it's actually, it's not easy to create plans, but really the work comes in trying to close the gap between the plans that are in place and actually what's being implemented and carried out day to day by the town. Um, and this is something I've been working on closely with our sustainability commission. How do we implement our climate action plan? And so I have a number of ideas based on that work, you know, that could be applied to uh, age friendly policy and planning. One is to um, incorporate greater staff ownership over the plan itself once it's released. Um, that could be through, through trainings, through annual or semi-annual workshops um, to make sure that the plan is a living document for everyone to be referencing. The other is to include some sort of sensitivity um, towards the action items in the age-friendly plan in, uh, in town reports that come before us so that as a council, as a body, we are actively considering the impacts of all the decisions that we make um, on the folks in our community uh, who uh, need that consideration to age safely in place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we'll hear from Brian Colbert. Yeah, hi, as I alluded to during my opening statement and John referenced, um, I supported the creation of the Age Friendly Commission while on council. And I think the most interesting thing that's going on right now is every, you know, every community in Marin is really struggling with that. And right now we're all, we're all strapped. I mean, our budgets are strapped and we're having challenges with staff. So one of the things I've been doing during COVID is working on the Marin Economic Task Force. And what that does is that brings together stakeholders from throughout uh, Marin County. And one of the things we've heard is a number of interesting presentations by groups that specifically work with seniors. And I think the first thing you realize is that San Anselmo and Fairfax are not alone in this. And the whole thought of, well, we can do this and we can do that. I mean why not partner and learn? Why not take best practice that are going on in other communities and bring them back to San Anselmo? Why not let San Anselmo take those things and bring it back? I think that's the most important thing we can do. Learn here on the ground and then perhaps partner with other communities to be more effective and reach even more seniors with the help and resources that they need. Thank you. This question is directed to candidates for the Fairfax Town Council and we're gonna we'll begin with Bruce Ackerman. How would you encourage more housing options for Fairfax seniors? Bruce? Well, as I said, I worked quite a bit on Victory Village. And so I believe we have succeeded in, in, a, uh, in large measure on that. We also, it, through the same general plan process that identified that opportunity, we have identified other opportunity sites and I very much support us using those opportunity sites to bring in housing for low and moderate income people. It's uh, unfortunately we're sort of at, our small communities are sort of at war with the state in terms of forcing us, I think it's right to force us to make quicker decisions about housing, but it's not right to have so many programs that 
really have only a token amount of affordable housing. So what we're waiting for is to see, is to be able to do much more affordable housing. This takes a lot of work, a lot of coordination. It isn't easy to get the money together. Many partners have to work together on it, but having the community conversation that doesn't derail the process through taking so long is the biggest thing we can do locally. Thank you. Now, Chance. Thanks. Yeah, so this issue is kind of close to me. I helped my coworker uh, who recently passed away from a fall, but he, uh, he had moved from Mill Valley to Corte Madera because his house had too many steps. And he couldn't find a home easily uh, in Mill Valley that was within his price range that he could you know, live in and maintain uh, at his age. And I think that's an issue that we're experiencing all around Marin. There are a lot of homes in a lot of funky spots, especially in Fairfax with the topography that we have. And we don't really have a, enough senior housing in the flats uh, that can accommodate a successful transfer from these homes that are hard to maintain with lots of steps and lots of underbrush and, and defensible space that needs to be maintained and move these folks. So that's something I, again, want to look at with uh, upzoning some of these places that have been identified in our housing element, and we're continuing to update that housing element. And I think that that's where I'm going to put my focus because it's all cyclical. You know, renters want to move to homes, uh, and then folks that are in homes they can't maintain want to move into senior housing with wraparound services that are closer to community. Thanks. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Joe. Um, yeah, I, I think when we talk about uh, affordable housing for for seniors, I think with you know, my experience with my father um, and when we brought care into the home was that it was a, it, we also needed to house the caregivers. The caregivers were coming from Fairfield and Vallejo, and we had a real difficult time uh, maintaining consistency in that relationship, and that was. It was really difficult at home uh, um, to, to deal with that different faces coming all the time. And it was because of the, the commute. So when we're, we're talking about housing for seniors, I think it's really important to talk about um, housing for caregivers as well. Um, and yeah, I think it is, it's the flats and, and you know, looking at multifamily units and, and kind of doing away with some of the, the parking requirements for them for that are you know, that for seniors who wouldn't be making use of those parking spaces and doing away with some of those outdated policies for um, so that we could have some multi unit uh, um, family units built in the flats. Thank you. Same question to Barbara. Okay, so I think it's also about keeping people in their homes. And one of the things I've done, or several things I've done, is brought three renter protection ordinances to Fairfax. And we were the first city in town in Marin, Marin to adopt them. Section 8, anti-discrimination, just cause eviction, and mandatory mediation for rent increases. I also pushed over the years for adoption of ordinances to streamline approvals of second and junior units and create a 10-year amnesty program for illegal units. And all units also get a 50% fee reduction for the 10 years. I successfully fought to retain and allocate federal HUD funds for very low and low income senior housing, Victory Village. For the COVID program, I worked out Fairfax's rental assistance program logistics with the County Marin Community Foundation and the nonprofits so St. Vincent's and Ritter House could run our program for us. And I ensured the council allocated more money than what was originally planned, at least 60K. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, lastly, John Reed. Yeah, um, yeah. in Fairfax, we've done a, a number of good things. Victory Village is, is great. There's 52 units of low-income housing and things like that. I also worked for 10 years on the general plan that Bruce and I both worked on. And um, we laid out a, a number of plans there um, and ideas there, some of which Chance talked about, which is you know opportunities in the flats downtown. Um, Junior second units is, are another good solution. If a senior owns their home and they need less space, they, they, they can rent out the rest of their place and live in the junior second unit or have the junior second unit have a, a caregiver there. Um, you know, it depends on the income. Uh, what we really need to do is look at the needs of individual seniors and, and 
Taylor, you know, just see what all the different variables are. I mean, as Brian talked about, learning from other communities is, is good, uh, you know, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel every time. But I, I think we've got a pretty uh, multifaceted program so far, and I would like to enhance that and, and develop it as we go along. Thank you. Uh, this next question is directed to candidates for the San Anselmo Town Council, beginning with uh, Ann Pollitzer. The question is, what are the biggest issues facing San Anselmo residents aging in place at home and now sheltering in place during COVID-19? Anne? Well, I think a lot of it is financial. Um, you know, they're, we, they're, uh, it's expensive to live here. Um, as people age, you know, a lot of them are on insurance policies that, you know, are, are partially to tied to pensions. The money dwindles when people don't pay into them. Um, they are, you know, some of them are more isolated from their families because, you know, occasionally, you know, people move away from Marin and there's no one here and we need to keep them in their houses. Um, they also require services that uh, Fairfax has a lot of, we don't have as many. Um, I think that um, or the priority here should be, if people can't stay in their houses, develop ADUs um, and develop other ways for, for um, the people to stay local. I think that, uh, one of the things we really need to look at are large uh, facilities like TAM House that are um, developed from pre-existing, you know, um, uh, apartment buildings or residences downtown. Those were built in, in association with church funds. Um, perhaps we could look to um, financial partners that are uh, large employers in the in the Bay Area who would back those up. So we need to really invest in, in keeping people here. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Eileen Burke. So I, uh, my father is 86 years old and um, soon to turn 87 on Sunday. So he is aging in place in the house I grew up in. Um, and the biggest issues facing him related to COVID-19 are shopping um, because of safety. You know, he's, he's in a vulnerable population. So it's hard to go out. Uh, it's hard for him to even go to church without distancing. We've, in, and socializing, you know, he's, he misses his friends. And he, he sort of has said, look, I wanna be careful, but I don't wanna spend the last years of my life isolated in my house. So we've taught him how to Zoom. My family does Sunday dinner by Zoom uh, every Sunday. Um, and, and it's been helpful. You know, I mean, just reaching out to people is super important. Um, my sister's been living with him for a while to help him. But getting necessities, you know, medicine, getting to the doctor, shopping, the basic needs of life in COVID are the hardest part. And luckily, neighbors are helping neighbors is what I'm seeing. But for, in our case, our family is helping my dad. Thank you. Alexis? Hi, thank you. Uh, as I mentioned, I am a third generation Marin resident. And so I, I certainly have um, had family members age in place and also family members uh, not be able to age in place. I would agree that um, the financial piece is a huge part of it. Um, there's a lot of uh, folks here who are older who are house rich and cash poor. And what that means as a council is we need to be really sensitive in the kinds of fee and tax structures that we um, ask of our community members uh, because we actually have a pretty uh, diverse demographics uh, socioeconomically uh, to an extent along age lines, but of course not exclusively. Um, another huge piece is access and transportation. If you're living in the hills, the world becomes a lot smaller once you stop driving. Uh, and so there's um, limited ability for the town to sort of <laughs> change its topography, um, but we can certainly be sensitive to um, services and neighborhood type support networks that can kind of emerge in place in some of these trickier access spots. And then finally, safety. Um, a big concern I have is, is communication when the power is out. Uh, one reason for this is a lot of, oh, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we'll hear from Brian Colbert. Yeah, hi, thanks. So I think the, the greatest challenges right now have to do with the public health and the economic uh, challenges. And so um, I saw this crisis coming back in April. And so um, I've really been focused on the policy response because I think that's what we're sort of being asked to do running for town council. So I've been on two county level uh, committees, Marin Recovers and Marin Economic Recovery Task Force. And so the real thing is if, if you want our seniors to get out of their house, you got to figure out how to get people adhering to public, uh, you know, public health directives in a way that's meaningful to them. And the second thing is, if you don't figure out how to sort out the economy, our towns aren't going to be able to figure out how to provide basic services at all. Um, Alexis raises a point about, you know, uh, getting in and out of the hills. 
I'm a member of the Transportation Authority of Marin and also Marin Transit. And one of the things I've been focused on is, you know, how do we get people back and forth uh, during their last mile? It's one thing to say, oh, it's great for neighbors to help neighbors. But what if, what if your, your neighbors can't help themselves? Or what if your family's far away? I mean, I'm really focused on what's a sustainable, scalable model that we can use throughout Marin so the burden doesn't fall on the towns that are already cash strapped. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from John Wright. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I agree with many of the points uh, already raised. I'll, I'll put this in terms of uh, one of my elderly neighbors uh, down the street who's in her late 80s and she doesn't have a cell phone, she doesn't use a computer. So I think for somebody like that, the issues are uh, access to services and transportation and some of the concerns already raised about, you know, how does she do her shopping? And, and she, she, she can't get out, even in the best of times, she has uh, difficulties, but with the public health crisis, it's even harder. So I think the, a solution to that is one that we've talked about several times earlier uh, in this uh, forum, and that is uh, better neighbor to neighbor connections and more organized connections. And uh, we are working on that. And that, that I think should be a strong priority for the town. And would be one of my priorities if I'm reelected to the council to be sure we have a very effective network of uh, neighborhood response groups, you know, building on Firewise and some of the other volunteer efforts that are already out there. Thank you. This next question is for candidates for the Fairfax Town Council, and we're going to begin with Chance Quitrano. The question is, how will you ensure that input of older adults is sought and included in your town's planning process and in your policies, procedures, and programs? Chance? Yes, yeah. So uh, in graduate school, um, I was getting a master's of public administration. I remember doing a policy competition about you know, how do we really ensure democracy uh, when you know, some folks can't even get up the steps of City Hall? And I think symbolically, that's kind of how we need to think about this issue. I mean, you know, physically, there are issues with ADA accessibility throughout Fairfax. But the other issue that is critical at this point in time is the lack of digital literacy and the need for those types of skills to be able to participate in Zoom meetings and in other ways where we're moving forward in this pandemic. Uh, and I think, you know, connection with age friendly, connection with the volunteer board, connection with other committees in town, in town to actually help out with that digital literacy and the outreach around that type of stuff is gonna be the first step in folding people into policy discussions. Uh, so that's where I would plug in my energy uh, as a council member at this point in time. Thank you. Next is Joe. Yes. I. I Definitely think that uh, you know returning to the neighborhoods and and um, and and really forming networks of of safety within neighborhoods and and all of us sharing what our specific skills and gifts are that we could possibly put together and package and and give to some of our older adults in our neighborhoods and yeah people who can come in and and set up you know telehealth uh, um, appointments for for an older adult and and teach, you know, come in and do some IT work for them so that they are ready to partake in a Zoom meeting. And I think the, you know, we're on the cusp of, a, of possibly a new structure of our council meetings, which I think should help. I mean, right now there's been a, a for years, it's been a huge problem with inclusion with council meetings that are running to one o'clock in the morning. And that's just not gonna get participation from older adults. So I think maybe even looking at some special meetings when, when there are issues for older adults and pushing that start time to maybe five o'clock so that they can participate in the issues that are most important to them. Thank you. Next is Barbara. Well, I think one of the things we have in Fairfax is a very engaged community and it also includes many older adults. But I do think um, now with our reliance on Zoom and some of the internet capabilities, we are limiting our potential participation with older adults who don't necessarily have cell phones or know how to use them that well or devices. So as part of age-friendly activities, we put on age-friendly forums, which were held in the library, but now are being held by Zoom. So as Chance mentioned, I think one of our biggest struggles is to make sure we can get people literate to either use their cell phones, which they can get free through the California phone system, 
and or potentially use devices if they have them available. But I think that special meetings for age-friendly topics, which we're doing through age-friendly, where it makes sense, getting people involved in Ross Valley Villages when we can get back in person will be one way to get people back in our council chambers when we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Same question to John Reed. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I guess, I mean, people have talked about these very real problems of getting people engaged and literate in, in electronics and stuff like that. And it, in some ways that's the silver lining of COVID and is it is really forced the issue, but we can't really stop at at just these electronic means which we're relying on so strongly right now. I, I think there are outgoing people and there are relatively interviewed people who for whatever personality reasons don't want to go out and interact as much. And I think that that's where in a gentle way interacting with your neighbors and reaching out for things that they need is really what can bring us together as a community and help these more reclusive people. Um, I, th I think that that's really important to build community and it's really important for those people involved. Um, you know, having access to the meetings, definitely having afternoon meetings and things like that are, are good. I want to just want to be on record as supporting that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we'll hear from Bruce Ackerman. Well, I too would love to see our council meetings start earlier, although there's some people will push back on that because if they're working, they can't come at five o'clock. So it's very difficult. The um, having cared for my parents and now for my wife's mother, I'm fairly familiar with the support services that we have in the county and any support we can give for those as a town is, is, uh, is excellent. We do have a good network, but not everybody is aware of it or tapped into it. Um, I would support the uh, collaboration with San Anselmo in, in any of these efforts. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. There's not loads of money available right now, but what there is in our towns is a very strong sense of community. And as far as transportation, some small shuttles we envisioned all the way back in the general plan that we could try to get that going and uh, of course improve transit and ride sharing would be very helpful to seniors to get out thank you thank you this question <clears throat> is for candidates for the san anselmo town council and we're going to begin with eileen burke the question is in a recent survey of older adults in marin Climate change and emergency preparedness were listed as primary concerns. What do you plan to do to help older residents in your town be ready? Eileen. So this is something that, um, again, I'm already doing. Um, I personally have signed up for readymarin.org CERT training, which is a community uh, emergency response training and through the age friendly pilot program in my neighborhood I've got six other neighbors ready to sign up and four of them are seniors and so that will help us help each other uh, we know that first responders can't get everywhere first so we're going to need to rely on each other so that's one thing um, we hand up when I uh, was first involved with age friendly San Samuel, we put door hangers on every single residence in the whole town that had information that people could read about where to go for services they might need during COVID. And we identified seniors that needed exceptional help and we've been getting them that help. Um, I had an event at my house where we showed people what an emergency kit looked like and we invited the whole neighborhood. It was socially distanced. So in, on my street at the neighborhood level, we're doing what we need to do for emergency preparedness. Thank you. Alexis, you're next. Thank you. Um, this is a question that I also work cl closely with. Um, I'm, as I mentioned, endorsed by the Sierra Club as well as our Ross Valley and Marin uh, professional firefighters. Um, and I think this really comes down to the adaptation piece. In the short term, um, communication and networks, as has been talked about extensively tonight, is absolutely a piece. 
Um, I'm a resilient neighborhoods alum and also a member of my uh, my neighborhoods firewise community. Um, I also supported the formation of the the new marine wildfire prevention uh, authority, which does uh, mobilize some resources to help with um, emergency response and also prevention. Um, I, I support fully staffed engines, uh, and our fire our fire station is currently understaffed, and we need to have fully staffed stations to really provide. Uh, the most vulnerable members of our community, the services that they uh, deserve, that we all deserve. Um, and then again, it comes back to, I think, um, with, with climate change, there's really a communication piece here that needs to be locked in because um, what we're going to be dealing with is, is unprecedented and we all need to make sure that we're on the same page uh, and able to help each other um, as, as a community when called on. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll hear from Brian Colbert. Yeah, hi. You know, two really, uh, two really good questions. Uh, I, I think the, the thought about climate change. You know, I, I go back to the old thing that you know uh, JFK said: "A rising tide lifts all boats." What we really should do is figure out how we can help everyone in our, in our community, and then focus on our seniors. So I think you know, as terrible as COVID is, what it really allows us to do is move forward. And so I've been focusing um, in San Anselmo and at the county level is how can we rethink economic recovery for sustainability and to effectively bend the climate curve? Like now is actually the real time to do it. Similarly, you know, how can we really rethink transportation, right? So that we can sort of get people back and forth. Transportation is the, the biggest thing that we have influencing uh, greenhouse gases. Um, also, I'm also been endorsed by the firefighters because they know that I'm committed to, you know, true disaster preparedness. Um, and I'm prepared to actually do the heavy lifting because I understand budgets, not only to have a conversation about how to fully staff them, but actually how to get paid for. Um, so that's, that's what I think, finally coupled with, you know, unfortunately, personal responsibility plays a large part too. Thank you. Um, next is Ann Pollitzer. Um, well, climate change and how it impacts on emergency preparedness is a two-pronged thing. First, there's dealing with climate change, and then there is dealing you know, with being prepared, which happens right in your face, and you have to be ready to act when it occurs. So I think that we should really be focusing on here um, these neighborhood uh, alliances that support our seniors through fire safe, age friendly, and the CERT training, but also on places where they can go. I mean, a lot of these evacuation maps um, which the town has done and they, we finally have them for San Anselmo and they're great. They say, go to your local grocery store, you know, so just leave like you were leaving normally to get out of town. So I think we need to work with our local seniors in some sort of capacity through the town where they know where to go and they know how to get there. And this is prearranged. Maybe we could even have, you know, this would have to happen. COVID cools down some sort of, um, virtual practice drill for people, you know, so we can set it out through the town hall where people will know what to do in case of emergency. We need to be setting up the cooling centers, which I know that um, Forrest Pound is the head of the Sustainability Commission has been looking at, charging stations for seniors who do have electronics that need to be charged. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. I've got a message that I missed, John Wright, did I? Yes, you did. Please go. Okay, thanks. Um, so well, one of the great things about these forums, especially with Fairfax, is a lot of great ideas and uh, things we can share with each other. Um, and, and in fact, uh, one thing we are sharing that's quite related to the emergency preparedness uh, idea is that we are soon going to be hiring uh, a, a staff member working for the Ross Valley Fire Department that will be the emergency preparedness coordinator for uh, Fairfax, San Anselmo, and Ross. Uh, I've supported that. I'm very excited about that because that will be a, a way to link in directly with the neighborhood volunteer groups that are already there. And to the point that several people have made, ensure that, that all neighborhoods have these. My particular neighborhood is pretty well developed on the Firewise front, but not everybody is. But we have a lot of models to build on. So I think uh, the, the sharing of resources, the doing things at a common level, because we're small towns. And one of the advantages we have is that, you know, we can do things on the ground as, as I do and others do as well. And then we can be on a council to make policy decisions. So emergency, emergency preparedness, as I mentioned earlier, is one of my top priorities in that, uh, in that realm. Thank you. This next question is for candidates from the Fairfax Town Council. If you are elected, how will you support the update and implementation of Fairfax's age-friendly plan? And we're going to begin with 
Joe. Um, so as we've been talking quite a bit about, I think it's first identifying um, the, the folks, the older adults who, who need these services the most, uh, where are they? And then making extra effort to reach out to the, to the most vulnerable within that group and making sure that they have the information they need as, as these services are rolled out. Um, and particularly looking at the, the already marginalized groups of you know, Latinx and, and particularly the, the older adults who, who speak Spanish have a really tough time being included in a lot of these services. So we need to make extra effort to, to get to them. And that, you know, we, we need to know where they live and target um, you know, some old school paper applications and communications and not rely on everything being digital. We don't want mailings going all out over the town, but I think if we identify where the older adults are um, who need the services, we can get the communications to them in paper form. Thank you. Next we'll hear from Barbara Kohler. You need to go where your customers are. So um, the first thing we need to do on council is go where our residents are. Um, so look, I, I was part of council when we authorized the, the $2,500, you know, cash wrapped or not, right? You, you got to figure out how to reach people. Everybody isn't thankfully tied to their phone. So I think what we will have to continue to do is figure out how we will continue to adapt to, to meet the needs of democracy um, during and after COVID. I mean, COVID is with us now, but it's not going to be with us forever. So I think it's important that we remain in an open dialogue and be, uh, be unafraid to try new concepts and, and, and have ideas. I mean, you know, one of the hallmarks of Marin is an openness to experimentation and, and trying. So, so I, I think that's what we can do. Thank you. Uh, next we'll hear from John Wright. Um, thanks. Well, I, I would uh, echo what uh, Alexis and Brian have said uh, already. And I, I do think that uh, the COVID experience has uh, shown us that uh, the Zoom meeting and virtual input actually can work for some people, but I think the we do need to have better training for uh, uh, older adults to to do that. Um, I think one another idea would be to have specific uh, uh, forums on specific issues directed um, on issues that are of particular importance to elder adults uh, that we have. Um, exclude almost like focus groups. I think focus groups are hard to do in the traditional way uh, right now. But uh, if we had uh, a series of sessions that were uh, to which we specifically invite uh, older adults, it might actually get more turnout. But uh, as Brian indicated, engagement is always a problem. Not not as much in Fairfax as it is in San Anselmo. But uh, we do have a we do have that issue, and we need to work through multiple channels. I think to be sure that we get everybody's input. And particular, particularly older adults with 25% uh, and up to 40% now in the, next, in the next 10 years of uh, residents over 62. Uh, 
I, I, Any question to Anne? Um, yes, I think everybody is right so far. And I think Brian made a really good point about, you know, you have to go to your customer, but I think we have to, to actually go to these people and talk to them. I mean, a lot of them are not online. They're not on Zoom. With this election, um, I've been walking around with Eileen. We've been talking to people on the street, you know, talking to constituents um, and the people have a lot to say. We're talking to a lot of older people. And I think if we can do some sort of targeted personal outreach, even with the COVID thing at some point, we will learn a lot. We could go to places where old people are, you know, libraries, church groups, you know, they may not be there physically, but we can at least access the network and we could interface with them. And that way we have contact with the um, specific groups in the community that we need to talk to. So um, I think it's really important to, you know, somehow as much as we can in this situation, get some face-to-face -face, um, input from them. And um, then we can mobilize that information, you know, when we target it into, you know, what we do with our networks to help them. And we've got to enfranchise them in the process too. And that helps fight, fight isolation. Um, but I think that's the way to do it. Thank you. Eileen, you're next. So um, one of the eight domains of liv livability that's a focus of age-friendly San Salmo and every age-friendly group is communication and information. And so I think it is really important. Um, there's high-tech communication, email, websites, Zoom, um, and in 30 years, we'll probably all be computer literate. But I also support low-tech communication, kiosks in the neighborhoods, um, marquee digital boards, though, though they're high tech, people can see them visually. You don't have to log on to anything. Um, and, and old fashioned phone trees in areas of when there's disaster. Um, my dad's a member of St. Anselm's Parish and they have identified every older person in their community and they regularly have a phone tree that calls those people to check in on them. So that's a, a private organization that's doing what we need to do, but we can do that at the neighborhood level. Again, like my neighborhood is doing, um, so I think it's reaching out in every way you can to our seniors that are out there um, because they need it. Thank you. Uh, the next question goes to candidates for the Fairfax Town Council and we're going to start with Barbara Kohler. What are the biggest issues facing Fairfax residents aging in place at home and now sheltering in place during COVID-19. Well, I think we all know that everybody wants to stay at home if they can. And I face this with my parents as well. So some of the ways we can help people stay at home, particularly in this time, is connecting them with Ross Valley Villages who can help with chores as well as driving. Uh, we can encourage house shares through the COBIA program so people can stay in their home and we can pair up younger folks with older adults. Reaching out for loneliness is a real big deal. It's really hard to be in your home when nobody knows you're there and they don't check in. One way is by phone, but also letting people know about the services. Um, the volunteer match program, which was really uh, put in place by Mayor Goddard and Council Member Hellman, and the Good Ferry Program, which is on next door, helps people to, during the shelter in place to get go shopping for them. Food Bank, our Fairfax Food Bank actually delivers to people at home so they don't have to go out. When I was mayor in 2015, we held our first senior fair and through that program, we let people know about all the various services. And I followed up having various services present at our Fairfax Council meetings once a month. Thank you. Thank you. John Reed, you're next. Yeah, I mean, I, my dad's 88. And I think, to be honest, loneliness is one of the bigger problems that there is. I mean, it, especially during COVID, um, you know, everybody in my family is making efforts to reach out to him. Um, but I see that in our communities. And I think that the one-to-one -one match program is a really good volunteer effort. Uh, I think that that can be enhanced to do a lot more than running to the store or whatever like that. I mean, people need friends, people need community. Um, getting more digital liter literacy obviously can help somewhat, but there's a learning curve with that. And, uh, you know, th there's many needs that very different individuals have and listening to what those needs are. And sometimes it's just regularly checking in um, 
you know, can go a long way towards towards meeting that those problems. And so, uh, it brings community together. But I think that that this all these dip, it has many facets. But I I think loneliness is really important to deal with. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is Bruce. Well, I certainly concur with all of those thoughts, and uh, and I give plenty of credit to folks in the community who have put together the volunteer match program and some of the work that we've done during COVID. I look forward to the time when COVID is no longer the biggest issue for us, but I think we can learn a lot from some of these, and this seems like something that would just fit Fairfax very well to continue that kind of program. When, I, when we took care of my parents, my mother wanted to be a member of Christ the Victor Lutheran Church, which is no longer in existence. They actually donated the land for Victory Village. But I got to know all the people in Christ the Victor, took photographs of all of them. We just had a great time together. And I, I totally concur. Loneliness is probably the biggest thing that, that I've seen in, in my experience with seniors. Um, people were able to get around, they were able to get out with, with whatever help they needed, but the question was really community for, for people. Thank you. Chance, you're next. Yes, yeah, so one of the things that I'm thinking about is this the, the physical issues that come with this social isolation. You know, uh, the recent uh, Marin Older Adults Needs Assessment 2019-2020 found that one third of older adults sustained a fall in the last year, but a quarter of low income adults don't have a neighbor they could call on in case of an emergency. And I think it's indicative of the same issue that we're experiencing with the pandemic where folks can't get their groceries, but also folks just need those wellness checks. And in helping to develop that one-for-one -one volunteer program was able to connect with a lot of uh, older adults in my community. And now that we have contact information, we're constantly checking in with each other just to see how we're doing. I think post COVID, I'm gonna to continue to do the types of things that I've been doing on the volunteer board, creating that community spirit and fostering community wellness through a number of community events from the picnic to the holiday wreath making and caroling events and things like that. People wanna have stuff to do. Uh, they wanna be out in community with their friends. And so I think creating more opportunities for that is gonna be essential moving forward. Thank you. Joe McGarry, you're next. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, during, during the shelter in place, I, I was my mom's shopper, you know, and, and brought, her, brought her groceries, you know, once a week. And uh, if she had a big baking project, it might be, might have been twice a week. Um, and so there's this piece of supplying the, the basic needs that, are, that our older adults, um, you know, have. But I think there's also this connection. And
do support ADUs, but we're also building at one Lincoln Place a uh, senior housing uh, complex right now. It's under construction. That'll be 14 units. So I support both those types of, of built, developed senior housing and converted senior housing for communal living because I think it's the wave of the future of, of where we're headed. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Alexis. Hi, thank you. So um, I, I also support the sort of thoughtful and well-cited development of, of new housing. And we do have um, a housing element to our general plan that outlines some opportunities, but as has been indicated, it's hard to, um, to attract development. However, having strong partnerships with uh, existing nonprofits and housing centered organizations uh, can actually make us more likely candidates for those kinds of partnerships to, um, to come forward and for there to be projects in our town. Um, but the but the other piece of this is is the conversion piece, right? The ADUs and the the junior accessory dwelling units. Um, we recently, as a council, did adopt state level policy, um, and in doing so, I was the only council member who advocated um, or who wanted to explore a big loophole that the state has in its junior accessory junior dwelling unit that um, actually penalizes folks who are aging in in place and then actually do have to move into a different type of care facility. Um, and so I was uh, identified and and kind of advocated against that loophole, um, but of course it was state law, so there's limited ability we have to intervene. Um, and then finally, making sure that housing stays affordable uh, through, as I said, sensible uh, fees and tax structures for our house rich and cash poor uh, folks. Thank you. Thanks. And that concludes the question portion of the forum. Um, I thanks to all the candidates for respecting those time limits. It made a big difference. Before the candidates make their closing statements, I would like to share some key aspects of this year's election, particularly in regards to how and when you can vote. We are very fortunate to have an outstanding elections department here in Marin, headed up by Registrar of Voters, Linda Roberts. The League wants to assure all Marin voters that this election and counting of the ballots is being conducted with the highest level of security, honesty, and integrity. November 3rd is election day. You have until October 19th to register, after which time you will have to go to the elections office to register and vote in person. Due to COVID-19, the state of California has implemented new, broader voting opportunities in order to promote public safety, providing expanded vote by mail options, as well as in-person voting. Slide four, please. Voting by mail will be the safest way to vote during this pandemic and will help to avoid lines at the polling places. Vote by mail ballots are being mailed today, October 5th. All active registered voters in Marin County will automatically receive a ballot in the mail. There's no need to request one. You can start voting by mail tomorrow, October 6th, by dropping off your completed ballot at one of the following locations. Any one of 12 secure drop boxes located around the county, the elections office in the Civic Center, or any US post office. To be counted, return ballots must be postmarked no later than November 3rd and received at the election office no later than November 20th. Please note that Marin County pays the postage for all returned ballots. Slide five, please. If you choose to vote in person, please note that as a result of recent legislation, there will be fewer polling places for this election. Voters will be assigned to a polling place that might be different from past elections. Your assigned polling place will be printed on the back cover of the voter information guide that you receive in the mail. Polling places will be open for four days, October 31st through November 3rd. There will be 29 consolidated polling places your ballot will indicate your assigned polling location. You can vote at the elections department in the Civic Center starting October 6th during regular business hours. 
masks and social distancing protocols will be required at all polling places and a limited number of people at any one time will be allowed in the polling place. All voters should make a safe voting plan now so they're prepared when their ballot arrives. For more information about Dropbox and polling locations, go to www.marinvotes.org. Thank you. At the end of this forum, there will be a slide listing several additional websites we recommend sites you may check out for more detailed election information. And now the candidates will make closing statements of one minute. We will go in reverse order of the opening statements, starting with Alexis Feynman. Alexis? Yes, thank you. Um, you know, I actually wanted to use my closing statement at a time really to just point out how interconnected so many of our answers were tonight. Um, and and how interconnected so many of the questions were tonight. And the reason I want to point that out is because my my belief, my worldview is that age friendly is not a it's not a bullet point, right? It's not something you check off. It's really a framework for understanding um, issues that come before us, issues that our community faces. And there aren't easy fixes to a lot of a lot of these issues. If there were, I mean, I think we all have good intentions and we'd all have solved them or people before us would have solved them. Um, and so what I'm what I'm offering as a candidate is you know, an ability to think about these things systemically and holistically and figure out where the overlap is um, with thoughtful, thoughtful analysis, thoughtful stakeholder mapping, uh, thoughtful outreach. Um, and it would be my honor to to represent you in that way on the council. So thank you. Eileen, your closing statement. So I think the reason to vote for me is because I'm smart, I'm reasonable, and I'll go out and talk to residents and I have perspective. I know a lot of seniors. My dad will be 87 on Sunday. Uh, so I, I live with the senior essentially and his issues. I understand how important being able to drive and being able to park is for seniors. I know seniors are often on a fixed income and are sensitive to taxes and they don't wanna be taxed out of their homes and they're very concerned about that. I joined Age Friendly San Samo because I like their focus. Everything about your town should consider strollers to walkers, all the residents not just seniors, but seniors as well as babies, middle-aged families. I know in 14 years, we'll have more people in our country over 65 than under 18. So I think if we don't focus on seniors, we're missing the boat. Uh, it definitely will be a focus of mine and it's something I'll continue to plan for on the council and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you. And? You're next. I just wanted to thank the League of Women Voters and the uh, Aging Alliance for holding this forum today. This has been incredibly informative for me, and I so appreciate all the work that everybody in both San Anselmo and in Fairfax are doing. Fairfax, I'm soaking you up. This is you know you, you're really you're really committed to interfacing with the entire community and making things work for the people. And as a council person in San Anselmo, I will do that too. I will reach out to you, and I like this idea of horizontal. Uh, community experience and horizontal structure as opposed to a hierarchical thing like we've had in the past. So I'm Ann Pollitzer. I'm a writer and a mom. Uh, I'm a volunteer and I have demonstrated repeatedly over the last 22 years that I can galvanize people and create constructive change in community. Uh, I will, for Stan and Sobel, regalvanize our volunteer network and I will plug it into age friendly, fire safe, resilient neighborhoods and cert training. And we will advocate for the older people who are in their houses and they can't get outside and they don't know how to use their phones. I'm committed to restoring Memorial Park and Playground, promoting disaster preparedness and fire safe neighborhoods and to the timely maintenance of drains and creeks, working with San Anselmo businesses to revitalize the downtown. And I'm committed to safeguarding the unique character of San Anselmo. Thank you. Uh, next we'll hear from John Wright. Okay, thanks. Um, well, it struck me that, uh, as, as Alexis said, there was a lot of interconnectedness among the answers. In fact, uh, at least in our council race, it's uh, a, a, people seem to have very similar ideas. So um, I'm suggesting that uh, during these times in particular, what the town needs is experienced leaders with a track record of, of results. Um, I've served San Anselmo for 24 years as a school trustee and a council member, including two terms as mayor. Uh, as a member of the Central Marin Police Council, the town's flood committee, 
and the neighborhood firewise community all continue to advocate for improved public safety measures in the face of the current challenges. I think the, the current town council works fairly well together. Uh, the town, I think, is on the right track. We have a great staff and a well-organized community of volunteers working on our many, many committees and task force. Uh, as have, has been mentioned uh, this afternoon, there's more we can do on the volunteer front, and I'm committed to do that. So um, as a council member for seven years, I've helped in some of these successes. I'm respectfully asking for your vote to reelect me for another four years so I can continue my work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, closing statement from Brian Colbert. Yeah, you, John Wright just said that, you know, there's a lot of similar ideas. Um, but I think the thing that separates me from the other candidates is that if you go to my website, Colbert for Council, you'll see that I've actually executed from a policy standpoint. I'm not gonna talk about, you know, the qualities that I brought to my daughter's classmate or, or what, I, what I'd like to do. Um, we already have a pretty substantial volunteer network. And if you go to my website, you'll see that most of my endorsements are from your friends and neighbors who are actually volunteering. The other thing I feel that's sort of necessary to say is throughout the conversation, I've continually heard about my parent this and my parent that, and I understand that. Unfortunately, I've already lost both my parents. Um, and so like many people, I actually had to live with the challenge of having parents who didn't have extensive financial resources. Um, so I actually know what, what, what it's all about. I know what it's to care give. I know what it's like to, to share, you know, familiar responsibilities, which is why I feel so strongly that at a policy level, we need to be able to help and empower people to um, live their lives independently and so families can band together. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Joe McGarry. Yeah, just a lot of, a lot of gratitude for, for being here today and, and the forum and, and want to thank all the organizers. Um, as my mom and I took care of my father at the end of his life, I was often hit with a wave of gratitude that I lived less than a mile away from them and could actively take part in his care. Now, it is so clear that my experience and more importantly, that of my mom and dad was the aberration. Most older people in Fairfax don't have family in town to respond immediately to the many day-to-day -day and urgent needs they have. It is time for all of us to become the adult children of our neighbors and become their number on the fridge, committing to pick up our phone when the call comes. That starts with connection and establishing trust. The town needs to redefine what it means to be a neighbor in Fairfax. It is so much more than an address. It is an opportunity to connect place and people where we share our gifts and our time with those who need it most. I am committed to creating services and neighborhood networks that provide a high level of care and connection for all the older adults in Fairfax. Thank you. Thank you. Closing statement from Chance. Yeah, so I work at an organization that has Every one of my coworkers is 65 plus, which is unique. And it's a privilege for me because I get a totally different experience. And one of the things that it makes me realize is uh, we're, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants. And every time I hear a new story, uh, I love this place, Fairfax, Marin, even more. And I want to work even harder to leave it better than I found it. The challenges we're facing, it's clear with the pandemic, with climate change, with wildfire prevention, they're intergenerational. And what that creates is an opportunity for all of us to work together and to help each other thrive. And I wanna bring my work ethic, my leadership, the action oriented nature I, I have to council. Uh, and I, I'd really like to work with you all and hear from you. So please reach out and I'd really appreciate your vote uh, to help me realize the, the vision that I think we can create here in Fairfax. Closing statement from Bruce Ackerman. There's a great deal of overlap among the things that we've said, and it's that's a good feeling that we're all working together and we all have a similar vision. I'll just highlight a few things that really stand out as themes that I've heard. Community living, communal living, I've been engaged in that all my life personally, but this town is what really brings that to a higher level. This is our whole town is such a strong community. The volunteerism and the junior second units and different ways that we can come together communally. And 
Um, energy upgrades is something that hasn't really been mentioned, but in our house, we did work on our house that lowered all of our energy bills by more than half. And that is something that many people could use help with. We have some programs in place, but it really is a lot of it is one to one education of showing people what they can do so that they can be more comfortable and spend less money in their homes and be safer. And then the shared transportation is an issue that all of us, uh, many of us have mentioned, and it's, it's a real challenge, but that's as we come out of COVID, we need to remember again about sharing space with each other. Thank you all. Thank you. And now we'll hear from John Reed. Um, yeah, I, it gives me great pleasure actually to see a lot of people sharing the similar ideas. Um, I, you know, before I got on the council, which was quite a while ago, I ran the volunteer board for six and a half years. Um, and, you know, I was a member of it before that. And I was on the general plan for 10 years, uh, general plan committee, which, you know, where it basically sketched out a lot of these policies and, and programs. And it, what has evolved into firewise, I mean, I, on the, my seat on the fire board, I've encouraged the continuation of the chipper days, which we started as the volunteer, uh, Fairfax volunteers, along with, um, we called them uh, neighborhood groups, but it's, you know, the same kinds of ideas coming up. But basically, I'm a creative problem solver. I like to listen to people and solve problems so that really make a difference in people's lives. Uh, I've been endorsed by the Sierra Club, um, Katie Rice, Stephanie Moulton-Peters, Karen Arnold, Damon Connolly, Larry Bragman, uh, I have a website, fairfaxian.com, and uh, I would really appreciate your vote. So thank you. Thank you. Barbara Kohler? I'm deeply committed to public service, which is shown by my years of work with state and regional government and volunteering for our town, both on the council, the open space committee, and the planning commission. I have a pretty significant track record of accomplishments, which serve older adults and age-friendly overall. I'd like to continue to serve my experience, good judgment, strong worth ethic and progressive approach will be needed over the coming years. In these times of national political turmoil, it's critical that we elect good ethical people with integrity to local office. I believe I meet and exceed these qualifications. I love Fairfax and I'm dedicated to serving our town. And to quote a colleague of mine, um, everybody aging, everybody's doing it, including me, and I'm an older adult myself. So thank you for the opportunity to participate in this forum. Thank you. Uh, we understand that there have been technical issues on YouTube, uh, and we are very, very sorry for the difficulties. A complete video will be posted on our website, uh, and hopefully you can look in that if you've had any trouble um, hearing this forum. Now that concludes our forum. Again, we'd like to thank our community outreach partners, Marin County Commission on Aging and Age Friendly Marin. Thanks to the candidates for participating, to Elaine Biagini for timekeeping, and to Nancy Bell and Ann Wakeley for technical support. And a special thanks to the team at CMCM TV. We could not have done this without them. As I just said, a video of tonight's forum will be posted on the League's website in the next few days. Slide six, please. For more information about the election, the candidates, and the ballot measures, visit the League's website at www.marinlwv.org and click on the Voters Edge logo. Here are some additional recommended websites. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us tonight and most importantly for voting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you.